This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information and to find out how you can volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Cherie Terrio. Anthem by Anne Ran, Chapter 3. We, Equality 72521, have discovered a new power of nature. And we have discovered it alone. And we are to know it. It is said, now let us be lashed for it, if we must. The Council of Scholars has said that we all know the things which exist, and therefore all the things which are not known by all do not exist. But we think that the Council of Scholars is blind. The secrets of this earth are not for all men to see, but only for those who will seek them. We know for we have found a secret unknown to all our brothers. We know not what this power is, nor whence it comes, but we know it is nature. We have watched it and worked with it. We saw it first two years ago. One night we were cutting open the body of a dead frog when we saw its leg jerking. It was dead, yet it moved. Some power unknown to men was making it move we could not understand it then after many tests we found the answer the frog had been hanging on a wire of copper and it had been the metal of our knife which had sent a strange power to the copper through the brine of the frog's body we put a piece of copper and a piece of zinc into a jar of brine we touched a wire to them and there under our fingers was a miracle which had never occurred before, a new miracle and a new power. This discovery haunted us. We followed it in preference to all our studies. We worked with it, we tested it in more ways than we can describe. And each step was another miracle unveiling before us. We came to know that we had found the greatest power on earth for it defies all the laws known to men. It makes the needle move and turn on the compass which we stole from the house of scholars. But we had been taught, when still a child, that the lodestone points to the north, and this is a law which nothing can change. Yet our new power defies all laws. We found that it causes lightning, and never have men known what causes lightning. In thunderstorms, we raised a tall rod of iron by the side of our hole and watched it from below. We have seen the lightning strike it again and again, and now we know that metal draws the power of the sky, and that metal can be made to give it forth. We have built strange things with this discovery of ours. We used it for the <coughs> copper wires which we found here under the ground. We have walked the length of our tunnel with a candle lighting the way. We could go no further than a half a mile, for earth and rock had fallen at both ends. But we gathered all the things we found and we brought them to our workplace. We found strange boxes with bars of metal inside, with many cords and strands and coils of metal. We found wires that led to strange little globes of glass on the walls. They contained threads of metal thinner than a spider's web. These things help us in our work. We do not understand them, but we think that the men of the unmentionable times had known our power of the sky, and these things had some relation to it. We do not know, but we shall learn. We cannot stop now, even though it frightens us that we are alone in our knowledge. No single one can possess greater wisdom than the many scholars who are elected by all men for their wisdom. Yet, we can. We do. We have fought against saying it, but now it is said. We do not care. We forget all men, all laws, and all things save our metals and our wires. So much is still to be learned. So long a road lies before us, and what care we if we must travel it alone? End of chapter 3